Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Dark Rooms podcast. My name is Ozone and as per usual, we are being joined by Inky Ink, Psychic and Underscore. But today we are also being joined by a huge inspiration of all of us and probably many of you listening too. So a big welcome to CG5. Hello everybody. <laughs> welcome to my podcast. It's your podcast. Yeah, it's, it's you're, his you're podcast. The podcast. Oh, yeah. Yes, my name is Ozone Five. Ozone Five is the fifth one. What nope. happened to two through four? Who knows? No, no, they, yeah. they died to the ozone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Um, so well, not, yeah. all, not <laughs> only is uh, CG Five the new owner of the podcast, it will now no longer be on my channel. It's on Ozone or Ozone Five's channel. So uh, make sure to subscribe yeah. to that. You know. I might just that make a new exists. channel called Ozone 5, just because why not? <laughs> just, like, <laughs> that um, anyway, uh, yeah, thank you so around. much for taking the time to come and talk to us. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe we have a lot of questions to ask, if, if you don't mind. <laughs> I do mind. For. I'm actually going now. I'm going to leave. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Everybody, thank big round of time. applause. Your what's the, what's your start. favorite song that you've made? Oh, this is gonna be a great podcast. Um, my favorite <laughs> song I've made. My favorite song that I've made is "I See a Dreamer" at this point because it has been that was a lot, a very con- contemplative. I think that the other songs that I made have always been contemplative. Like I've um, always had to do research and stuff like that, obviously. But um, I wanted to really make sure, especially with a song about dream that it was going to pop off for the right reason it was going to get mm. the views for the right reason or get consistent viewership and the only way that was going to happen was i was going to make it the best that i could and so that was my plan and then i fulfilled that plan i remember the first time i listened to ic dreamer i was actually bawling my eyes out when it was finished <laughs> so yeah passion is heavily connected to my work and i think ic dream is probably my favorite it's a good song it's a, it's a pretty good song in all yeah. honesty yeah thank you very much and it's got, uh, I think it's got you some connections, right? Because you you shared it a bunch with uh, like the members of the Dream Team and the surrounding sort of YouTubers like that, right? Yeah. So basically, Ant Frost, uh, Sapnap, and George Not Found, and Dream even, uh, they were all able to give it a listen, and they liked it. Carl, you know, all the Dream SMP people, um, and Bad Boy Halo. And Tubbo uh, were the ones that were specifically interested in actually working with me um, after having heard that song. And um, for Tubbo, actually, it was Gone Away. He had heard that song before he decided to reach out to me very randomly. I was like, oh, great. Okay, well, let's work together, I guess. So, you know, it just happened. These things, they just happen. Nice. Happened. Yeah. It was like this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This is happening. Um, it's fine. That, something about you is is you're very very quick to hop onto trends. Like today, of course, the cup the Cuphead show premiered, and you've come out with another song, um, a, a banger. Uh, but like, if if you don't feel like what you're making is good, then do you just completely scrap it, or like, like what's what's the whole process of like? making sure that it is as best as it can be when um when you say when you talk about the scrap it thing um i have definitely scrapped projects uh or attempts at a certain song that i was going to make like um when i made my song vibrant eyes i had made it my plan okay i'm gonna write a song about Rambo's character on the Dream SMP, and I had writ- I had made a whole song, um, and decided to scrap it entirely and start <laughs> over. Um, finished, basically, mostly finished, and I did not like it. Like everybody, I, I remember I was streaming it on Twitch, the creation process of this first project. And everybody was liking it. Everybody was freaking out in the chat, like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And by the time I I, I kept listening to it. And I kept working on it on stream. I reached a point where I felt like this wasn't the one. And so I decided to scrap that project entirely and start over. <laughs> so I've started over before because I need the song to be great. Um, there was also a, a, uh, 
when I when when Lion to Me, uh, my second song about Among Us came out, uh, I actually um, I actually had a project on standby that I had that had nothing to do with anything. I basically was just making this old classic beat, and it was mostly finished. And so I opened this project. I found it amongst my uh, many uh, work in progress projects. Found this beat, and I was like, okay, maybe I should flesh that one out. And so I've had instances where I've just um, either scrapped the project or used something old. Um, I actually with Muffin too. That was uh, that was diff- that was definitely different too because I had a almost I had a basically a full structure ready with this song that I didn't know what to do with, like a thirty second song basically, and I used it for Bad Boy Halo's Muffin, and then that's what happened so and the, all the processes with different songs are constantly changing it's always different there's never any solid <laughs> thing that i do it's just it just happens i can understand that yeah. yeah um now we've talked about some of your more relatively recent stuff but i guess uh i'm thinking we sh- should maybe jump back a bit uh how long have you been making music and uh what what really inspired you I've been making music <clears throat> since I was five years old on the computer. Um, five. When wow. I was three oh. years old, actually, no, no. When I was basically a child, I came out of the womb listening to 80s music and 90s music. <laughs> um, and that's all I've ever known, basically. I have, like, all 80s music burned into my brain at this point. Um, and that helps me write a lot. For sure, um, a lot of '80s artists inspire me, such as ELO, Phil Collins, um, <clears throat> Howard Jones, Billy Joel, Michael Jackson, um, classics, uh, uh, Fleetwood Mac, all those people. Um, very, very important inspirations to me musically, um, and y- yeah, I've been making music since I was five on the computer because my dad had. A, a very simple, uh, very simple DAW digital audio workstation called uh, Hip Hop EJ4. Um, this company EJ they came out with different uh, softwares that were specific to different genres, such as hip hop, techno, dance, all those things. They had these specific genres set for these different programs, um, and so I had. I had hip hop four and they had all these different sounds that I could play with beats that were pre-made samples, all that kind of stuff. I just, I just went crazy with those. And I basically had personal jam sessions where I made random songs when I was five years old and just grew my knowledge up till now. And so I've been working with music for 17 years. Nice. Wow. That's, That's quite a while. very long time. So you've really been like immersed in it really all your life. Yes, music is my life, literally. Music and family <laughs> and, and my gospel, but like yeah, that's everything for me. Wow. Jeez. So <laughs> you've you've been into song making for quite a while, but when exactly did FNAF get into that? Like when did you get into FNAF exactly? So my first big break in comparison to when I was making so I first, I started my CG5 channel when I was 16 to on the basis of making Pokemon video game remixes uh, all different kinds of video games TV shows just remixing different songs that already existed Heathens by 21 Pilots I remember I did a remix of that Ride by Katy Perry or whatever like that I just did a bunch of remixes um, and that was the basis of that channel. I didn't want to sing on it at all. I was actually scared to sing on that channel. I was—I remember I was talking to a friend. I was like, I don't know if I should ever sing on this channel. It would never fit. The people on the channel, the the three thousand subscribers that I've grown, are gonna hate it, and they're not gonna and they're, and they're gonna stop watching my videos and and everything. I was thinking about all these things that just I thought that it was not gonna fit, and so I didn't do it um, for a little bit. And so I decided at one point that I would make a uh, song about Bendy and the Ink Machine, yes. um, <laughs> which uh, was uh, a big break for me in comparison to anything that I've ever 
had ever released until, up until that point. Um, I remember after three days, that video had 30,000 views, which was it, it was random, too. It just grew out of nowhere um, and started getting a bunch of views on it. And so I learned more about that fan base and what they liked and what they appreciated. And I looked at FNAF. I looked at Five Nights at Freddy's and looked at um, – how that was definitely way more popular than Bendy and always will be. But during that time, that was that was the hot ticket. And that was uh, during the time that FNAF 6 was going to be releasing. And so I released uh, my uh, remix cover of I Got No Time by The Living Tombstone. And right. that was my... That is now my second biggest video on my channel. Uh, by first being Show Yourself by from the Among, the, the Among Us song. Um, but that was my huge spike on my channel. That was one of my biggest spikes on my channel next to the mm. Among Us stuff, uh, the the dream stuff of uh, in 2020. Um, that was a different time. But Five Nights at Freddy's was the basis uh, Five Nights at Freddy's and Bendy was the basis of the first bit of growth that I had. The first, uh, the basically the first uh, m- millions of subscribers, to be honest. Because I mean, I released a FNAF song like well, almost two months ago now, and that still did well because that community is still there on my channel, and they um, are getting exactly what they want. And that's Five Nights at Freddy's. So, you know, I've learned a lot about my community. So mm. before you like found like the Bendy community, and then found the FNAF community. Had you like not known anything about FNAF at all, or was that like just like a opening into putting music into that, and you'd heard about it? If that makes sense, I I had known a bit about it a little bit. Um, I remember 2013 when it was first blowing up, when it was an app um, that I I was definitely around during that time, um, mm-hmm. and I remember. You know, the Living Tombstone releasing his Five Nights at Freddy's song and that being the biggest Five Nights at Freddy's song in the world now. Um, like, that was my first exposure to Five Nights at Freddy's, but I never really looked into it. My my break I wanted to have was I wanted to become this producer. Um, I had a bunch of different dreams. I wanted to become a singer, a songwriter, a music producer, and, and do all those different things. And I had different... I, I kept... I kept coming with different plans and stuff like that, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And so that became a new plan uh, during that time, during that period where Bendy took off. And I was like, okay, I I should take advantage of this a little more. I should figure this out. I should figure out what works here. And so that's when I got even more into Five Minutes of Freddy's than I had ever gotten into it um, ever in my life. Uh, was during that time where I started writing songs about it, but like like crawling and um, no more oh, cake labyrinth really labyrinth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then, that's, that's such a classic. And then eventually, superstar. You know, it just it yeah it all came to a certain point. But I've I've always I've known about FNAF since the beginning, but I got into it circa 2017. Cool, cool. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I remember true. when Labyrinth first <laughs> came out, and I was like, "This is like one of the best FNAF songs ever." Because <laughs> it was, it was. I, I love songs that have like multiple parts, and yours like had like like five or six <laughs> people, and it was so cool. My basis of that song was like a dream come true. Um, like I wanted it to be a big collab. I had this idea in my head: like everyone needs to play a certain role in this song. This is Five Nights at Freddy's 6. There are all these different characters. I need everyone to have a role in this song. And I want to reach out to all these different people to to achieve that. Um, I remember when I got... Well, I had, I had, I had started to know about DA games through when um, Bendy was a big thing. And Rough. Can I Get an Amen had grown. And people had thought that I had... Uh, stolen from da games right and this whole, because this his, whole situation because wasn't his like benny chapter song originally can i get an amen and he changed it to gospel of May. it was it was like a code name um it was like a code name that he had for a trailer of a song that was going to come out in the no, future no. and people no. had thought that i had like taken the song 
these like five year olds started commenting you stole from the games and I the used games. to call them the games. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was his name. I thought that, that was his name. No and way, that I, wasn't a joke. No, I that wasn't a joke. I, mean, I can see it you all like lowercase. Uh, uh, I can see where you got that idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, really I should have I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> um okay. but that's how I got to know DA Games was uh, a, a friendship blossomed from there, and then he <laughs> so was able funny. to, yeah, he was able to be a part of that um, love labyrinth, which mm-hmm. was a really big deal for me um, to be able to collaborate with all these cool people at the time. They they still are cool, um, but <laughs> during that time, I was like, oh my gosh, these people are so cool and popular they could be on my song and it's going to make it so much better so that was that song was a dream come true at that time for sure something you said i really agree with uh, um labyrinth looking back it really feels like the fnaf 6 song because it's like it's like the penultimate song because like it like you said it has lots of different parts which is like fnaf 6 it really reminds Mm -hmm. me of um uh hold on i need to find it it was this one bendy song um that had like that one section had this one section had like parts from a bunch of different Bendy songs, and it felt like the like the Bendy song. Oh, it's it, from Victor McKnight. Yes, um, yes. Um, uh, uh, it's something I really like that. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, I was in. I was in that. I cameoed on that one, but um, face was, reality. Uh, face reality. Yes, there you go. Yep, I remember that one. That was mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, you were almost like the <laughs> you were almost like the the Henry of FNAF Six, like bringing all the pieces together. <laughs> yeah. Except you made uh, the song was fire, but you did not burn down a building in the process. So that was that's I did not good. terminate. Well, the we don't know. <laughs> See, I did not. I, yeah. I, I think one of the reasons that's that FNAF Six song probably really blew up is that FNAF Six was one of the first games that uh, the Living Tombstone didn't make a big song on. So you kind of filled the space that they left empty. That's kind of true. True. Yes. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Repeat that again. The Living Tombstone was the one yeah, who was making Tombstone. all the big songs. They didn't make a big FNAF 6 one at the time. Right. No, they didn't. And they probably won't. Um, knowing them, like they really want to focus in on the original stuff. And I just, I, I saw this huge opening, like, Oh my gosh, FNAF 6 is out. I got to do something ASAP. I got to do my research. I got to play this game. Um, that's you got basically it out fast. <laughs> I try to. I try yeah. I try to get things out in a timely manner. Um, it's very important that um, that the that a song can come out as soon as possible for something because it's about building a community and um the way my community works is I have to give them exactly what they want most of the time, <laughs> or they're not going to watch my videos. Um, of course, the community has been a little bit more respectful nowadays with like when I'm releasing original stuff and people have flocked over to that a bit. That's been cool. Um, but also, um, I still I still know I have to do the big things, the big things that I know are going to get the viewership because it's I'm I, I always hop on the trends. And I, but then there's things where like, I don't really enjoy, and I'm probably not going to ever write a song about, like, I'm not going to make a song about Genshin Impact or something (laughs) like that. I have no interest in that whatsoever. I have no interest in Arcane or Valorant, you know, stuff like that, that it's like, it's just not interesting to me. Um, And when things have like, also when things have interesting stories, like Bendy and the Ink Machine was not the greatest video game to be honest. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. Fair uh, point. I, yeah. I, pref- I honestly prefer all the songs to the actual game. The yeah. story the story was great for the game. For um, the most part, yeah. The ba- for the most part. It was easy to write about it, let's just say that. It was yeah. good enough to write about. Mm-hmm. And um, because of how interesting it was to me, I was able and how and and how it could have I, I when I write my songs, I try to apply it to other people that are outside the realm of video games. Um, when people like like pull up a song, like I'm not I'm not really one to like say the names of characters in my songs or something like Freddy is gonna get you or like Cuphead yeah. is yeah. doing cactus carnation or something like that. 
um, I'm really big on just keeping it open. I want to keep yeah. it open so everyone can cool. listen to this. Cool. I really, I really like that because there's like some really good songs that I, I like to listen to, but like, like I can, for example, uh, Try Hard Ninja's FNAF 4 song says the name Five Nights at Freddy's 4 in the song. And when I listen to it, I'm like, I, I like the song, but like, just like, it kind of like takes it, takes a bit away from you. Like when like you like, yeah. put it, I don't know. Like you, you, you get what I mean. It's about, I'm I know exactly to, like, what you mean. It takes away it takes away the immersiveness of the song. Like it could apply to everyone at some point or something like that. Or like I'm scared of this evil thing that's I'm that I'm running away from, and it, nobody cares what that evil thing is. It's just kind of it could be a little bit introspective. Like you could think like, oh, I'm running away from my own demons too. Uh, my demons are like Freddy, um, <laughs> and then then somebody says Freddy's gonna get you, and it's like, oh wait, never mind. Now I feel like I'm listening to a song from YouTube for kids or something like that. Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't, if it doesn't specifically call out something from the franchise, then you can a lot more easily reflect on it and apply it to a lot of different things more than just what it was kind of made for. Yeah. Not yeah, to mention, uh, not to mention, just like without being specific, you can open up to a lot more symbolic uh, lyricism. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. where like you can find the most interesting way to say something or to allude to something without going like oh it's it's Afton oh it's Freddy it's... yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but you uh, also want to try for references right yeah. yeah I feel like that's like a sweet spot that's like a references but not like explaining the game in a song I guess because I listen to music a lot and I like to like it's like yeah it breaks the immersion but if there's references I can be like oh I like this song for like this but I can also see how this is a FNAF song for example yeah. Yes, like well done, superstar. That whole like mm-hmm. sentence yeah. comes it's directly from Glam Rock Freddy. Um, but like somebody listening to the song that has no idea what Five Nights at Freddy's is, they can still enjoy the song for what it is. But the reference coming out also gives somebody like listening that does know about Five Nights at Freddy's kind of a not really like kind of, kind of like a nostalgic feeling. Like, um, oh, that's, that's something that I like. I love Five Nights at Freddy's. Obviously, that's what the song is about, but <laughs> it's very clear. But they said, well, done, Superstar. That's cool. I like that. That's what I felt. <laughs> I, I got the I, reference. It's, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, like you said, it's, it's, it felt kind of nostalgic when I first listened to it. it, it was it's really, nostalgia. It's a weird sensation. Yeah. I need to re listen to it. Um, it'll probably grow on me. I, I remember the first time I, I I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It just wasn't my taste the first time I heard it. But I, I will probably have to go back and re-listen to it a couple times. Um, yeah. I followed the basis of like the weekend, um, and that was basically the basis of the whole uh, <laughs> song structure. Well, no, the weekend and um, like the bossa nova music that you hear in the mall um, in the video game itself. Uh, mm, like right. the saxophone mm-hmm. and the just like really in the distance music that kind of gives it that horrific kind of feel or like the mall is closed and so you hear music in the distance and nobody's there's nobody in the mall and so that music is just echoing throughout the entire mall yeah. um, that was the basis I was following for this song the weekend slash George Michael slash echoey mall is closed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting combo. Genre, just put that in the genre. Just echoey mall is closed. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. A brand I new do, music genre. I do love uh, how like poppy it feels. Like uh, like pop music, kind of, uh, which is not a genre you usually get with FNAF songs. Usually, it's all very dark and gloomy and uh some big dubstep here and there uh, i think that you mm. either get happy or you get dark right I think. Yeah. um yeah you well, there, get super super happy there are some that are like good that kind of mix it um one of my favorites uh join us for a bite is like it's kind of poppy but it's oh also a touch of dark. So i much. love join us for it's a bite. so good it's so good <sighs> Oh my gosh, Join Us for a Bite is so cool the way it's written. It's like one of it's one of my favorite by my to Freddy's songs ever. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Made like so good. One of one of JT Music's best works, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. I think uh also that um Five to Freddy's has given us musicians the opportunity to make this 
interesting music that we know is going to reach a certain yeah. community, but we can also speak to other people through that music. Yeah. That's very well said. Um, now, I guess maybe we could get into sort of like the, the writing process. Like, where do you start? When, when <laughs> <Yeah. I> <laughs> oh, no. this is how i started with superstar because uh, that's the most recent one of the most recent ones um i started by playing the game for a little bit on stream i played it like i opened it maybe twice altogether uh and i never finished the game i decided to just watch Corey Kenshin play through the entire game. <laughs> you uh, enjoy it. Uh, I absolutely it. enjoyed it. Yes, the game is not great at all, uh, <laughs> but the story is awesome, and it's very it's very interesting to be able to write about. And so I did my research. I watched Corey Kenshin play. He did. He is so freaking funny, and I'm his I biggest agree. fan. And I want to I want to kiss him on the cheek. Um, and <laughs> well, he's also a big fan of him. I, I am. I have his U2s on my desk right now. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, dude, I've never gotten U2s ever. Um, but like I have, <laughs> uh, you can't see it, but I have like a bunch of his Bruce Kenshin merch. I have his, one of his hats. I It's on my desk right now. I have the, the up, down, up, down shirt. I like Yo, wearing let's that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I watched that series through and I took notes, um, wrote things, diff wrote things down of what I noticed. Uh, uh, I was, I was, I remember I was, I, I, I have this new process where I work on Twitch so that Twitch chat can help me or they can give oh, yeah. me cool lyric ideas that I couldn't have probably thought of myself because I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I feel like I'm not super literate with <laughs> poem, with poetic writing all the time. I can lay things out pretty well, but Perfect. I don't know like different words that could be interesting together until i see them and i'm like okay that does sound good but let me just hear that in my head and see what that sounds like let me sing that real quick see what that sounds like and then i'm like okay that does sound good i'm gonna put that in the lyrics uh maybe not but who knows um so i just have like a bunch of notes like pages maybe i don't know not really pages it's, just, it's like a word document obviously um but <laughs> I just type and type and type and type and type, uh, get all this research research down, all these lyric ideas down, and then I put it on to the lyrics. Um, but I match a melody with them. Uh, I, I like I said at the beginning, it's such a confusing process all the time. But I'm explaining the process specifically of Superstar right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I was given different lyrics and. I had this beat in front of me already that I had made. Um, not <clears throat> I had made for this, yes, because I'm so out of order right now. The first time I opened this game, I played for two hours, and after I played for two hours, I closed the game and I opened the project. I opened Ableton, which is my DAW, as soon as possible, um, and I just started. I, 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 I analyzed what I was listening to. Like, okay, what was I hearing there? I was hearing. Music in the distance. It sounded like saxophones. It sounded like bossa nova beats. There was the '80s music at the very beginning that was totally like synth wave and pop and all that stuff. I was putting that all in my head, and um, then I just started searching saxophone um, in like samples, saxophone samples. I started cutting things up, putting beats together, uh, make it made an '80s beat, and then I had this new this this. This thing I could start with, um, and I think, and I, and I, for once, this was one one of one of those one of those unique times where it was like, okay, this is this is definitely the one I want to go for. But I don't think I want to change this at all. Um, this is I mean, it came so quickly. Like I knew I, I had I had this new idea in like thirty minutes. This new beat idea and with saxophones and bass lines and everything. I was like, what? Well, I'm going to use this. So I did, and then I started structuring it, looked at the verse, put melodies to different lyrics, all those different music things. <sighs> you know, there's things that aren't very easy to explain, and I would say <laughs> that the process of making music isn't really obvious until you 
I, you watch me work or um, maybe if you pulled up a Twitch stream or something uh, from me where I'm working on the song, you can see exactly how I do things. Um, it's very, it's a very intricate process. I know that for sure though. I don't, I don't want to make something bad. The advice I give to people that are making music and are, or are wanting to start off is make bad songs until they sound good. <laughs> so that's always my advice. So uh, I, I have definitely done that. Yes, yeah, Inky <laughs> writes music as well. Uh, yeah, uh, he recently I, uh, worked <laughs> on a giant <laughs> soundtrack. That's yeah, awesome for, for you, for yes. Psychic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was I was gonna ask, but then background noise cut me off. Uh, I've I've always struggled personally myself. Uh, I've never written a song with lyrics before. The one time I tried, I, I couldn't get very far. Uh, so I think uh, just by the, the process you mentioned, it sounded like you had the lyrics first and then wrote the melody around that. That was the process for... <sighs> no. <laughs> See, that's it's different thing. every time. It's <laughs> different every time, I assume. Right, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's really not like that. Um, you don't sometimes, have a definitive answer. Yeah, sometimes I had melodies... Um, Melody ideas, uh, it's always it's, it can be helpful. I think a most a, a very helpful process would be to start with melodies. Start with, um, yeah, start with melodies. Start with like singing something random, like da 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 da, da or something like that. Just do something oh, random. God, just sing. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just make a random beat. Just just do something you know because you're gonna sit around and think like oh i can't do anything right and you're not going to be doing anything right you're you're correct in that because you're currently not doing anything so <laughs> you have to just do it you have to just that's it's just like anything anything yeah. that you work on you work on with time to get better i yeah. got better over time at talking to the camera um though i still think i uh, struggle in certain aspects of it because I'm not really um, I, I don't think I'm the best at talking all the time per se um, <laughs> I think that is just something that doesn't come across very easily for me but I, I, I do know that I am probably doing okay right now um, you're but, doing great yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you um, but <laughs> I am. I just know that I'm super passionate for music because of how much time I spent with it um, because it was my lively, li- livelihood my life and my livelihood. It's just everything to me. So to for for me to be able to give advice to somebody trying to make a song is I would just say just watch me work. See what you get out of that. See if your process is similar to mine. My process is always different, but that process could be <laughs> could <laughs> could be the same for you. Who knows? Yeah. Or it could be the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah either way it's a start i do like sorry i do like to start with like uh not being in front of the computer and just being at my piano in the other room um yeah. and then writing lyrics like a writing an acoustic song and then taking that song into the studio that's one of my processes oh, it's like it's like i'm remixing a song i'm remixing a, i'm remixing my my brain <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm remixing a song that's in my brain and putting it onto the software. I'm remixing that's a really song that I made. Yeah, that's a, that's a very unique way of looking at it. Because uh, so I'm like, not looking oh, at the technology all the time uh, when I'm at my piano. I'm just right, yeah. I'm focused in on that. And I guess a lot of it is is trying different things, trying out a lot of new ideas, and putting <laughs> different things together. I guess yes. Um, absolutely <laughs> yeah experimenting <laughs> that's all i ever do sometimes i feel like i should experiment more sometimes um because i get i can still get really lazy i'm an imperfect person uh as, as so is 100 percent of the world um but <laughs> i can get really lazy i can it's really easy especially if like something like uh with it, if it's something like my album or something that i'm working on very slowly because um the other because the bigger projects take first priority like okay i'm working on this cool song but oh no five minutes of freddy's has come into the play and there's this new security breach game i better get right on a song asap my process is so much 
different from or like my my way of thinking is much different from other musicians because other musicians have the pleasure of just writing about like their anxiety or something like that or some situation about themselves um with no game basis and they can they could get lots of plays and lots of listens you know but um i don't always have that luxury i i may be able to do that every now and then like with my song freak out with i fall apart sometimes with love isn't fair with that whole album behind love isn't fair patiently i've been able to release different original things but i i i let the video game things become first priority um consciously oh. knowing that it's going to do well would right. you say Almost that, like was there like a pressure oh. to, to keep up yes would you say like <laughs> you box yourself in to like a song when it's when it's popular you mean like i box myself into that project yeah. like like if, if like when like, like when like the among a song became popular we were like oh i have to write a second one and that's like the only thing or like how does that work like with well, when, with the, with the first Among Us song, that was a huge thing. That was like the biggest thing I ever mm -hmm. experienced in my channel ever. I remember I got 25 million views in the first month on that song. Jeez. Um, that was my biggest break ever in the first few, in, the, in just the first month. And I was like, yeah, I have to get on a second Among Us song <laughs> because that if that did as well as it did, it's going to do well again. Mm -hmm. So I get really motivated when I know something is going to do well. Um, cool. But I also make sure that it's good. I, I really need to make sure that it's good before I just put something out. So I am still focused yeah. in on that even when I, I don't try to put out crap. I remember I missed the window on making a Squid Game song, basically. Um, I Even though I did, I... My, I wanted to try and release it sooner. Um, so I was really expediting my work process because I was a little late on it. Um, Squid Game had become popular like two weeks prior before I had actually started making the song. And um, I had made this song, this whole song. And I was like, no, this isn't, this isn't it. I don't like this. This isn't the song that I want to come out for f uh, under my name for Squid Game. I made this song and I, I, I basically scrapped it, made another one, focused even more on that music, and actually added that song that I had made to the end of the other project, the project that I kept. So I combined two songs together to make this really cool piece called Inspector Royale. But it, I released it late and it still did okay. But it definitely could have done better. Okay. Interesting. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I I'd, I'd say it's like it's a good thing, like putting quality over timeliness. I guess. Um, mm -hmm. It's I can definitely understand that. <laughs> yes, unless you are, it, it, unless I am able to do both at yeah, a true. in a timely it, manner. Yeah, and you are very good at doing both. Like, uh, <laughs> I can't count the amount of times where something's come out and like very soon after you've got a you've got a song out already and it's really good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I planned ahead for the Cuphead thing. I was like, yeah, there's going to be a new Cuphead yeah. show. I know what, <laughs> what Cuphead's all about. Let's just write this song. I, I had already started that one like three weeks ago or something. Wow. Maybe like two weeks. Yeah, that was different. <laughs> a little different. Interesting. Uh, do you get other people to listen to like your ideas so that it like, because I feel like when, you, when you're producing music, uh, it kind of in a way gets i don't know how to explain it it <laughs> do you ask for like second opinions before a song releases like do you share it with like people close to you to get their thoughts on it yeah absolutely um if you watch the process behind i see a dreamer because i put that process up on youtube um it really it really honestly shows my best process I love that video so much. Um, it's like 24 minutes long. It's basically a short documentary. And it's oh, really, God. really cool. Um, but in that video, I go to my dad to help me um, with certain lyrics uh, that I thought didn't make any sense. I wanted to change them or make them better because my dad is much better with vocabulary than I am. And so I went <laughs> to him to help me with this. And... 
I yeah, I've definitely gone to other people for critique. It can be really hard to do that if you have an ego on you, and I do have an ego, but um, <laughs> not like that bad, you know. I I I, I mean, I think everybody needs a little bit of an ego, um, yeah. so that they can really uh, pick themselves up and work hard. Yeah, get some um, self confidence up there. Yes, exactly. There's a there's a difference between humility and self confidence. Indeed. Definitely. So, and that's why you have to go to other people that get help. So kind of yeah. on that, on like a similar topic, um, how do you deal with like harsh criticism of your work? Like, does that like, do you like want to be defensive or does, do, you, do you like take it in consideration? Like what's your, like what do you do with that? You know, funny enough, most of the time I have received, I haven't received super harsh criticism from people. Oh. Um, after releasing a song, I've only really received people just aimlessly hating, not really, or just telling me that the song is, oh my gosh, you should see the TikTok side of my community. It's ridiculous. There's a, <laughs> there's a whole new community that's just like on the negative side of the Dream SMP that has just come to rally on my profile and tell me how much they hate why did the chi- why did the chicken cross the road and tell That's me that a good this song though it's a good song though <laughs> thank you but they like come in and they just tell me this song is mid you you use way too much auto tune and it's like how is that a good argument <laughs> like <laughs> what everyone uses auto tune <laughs> what is wrong with you like literally all these people they they hate because they want attention they want me to basically react yeah. like i'm reacting right now <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> they, they, are, they are succeeding but at the same time like they have no life like i'm telling you, <laughs> you, have, you have no life. Life. l Straight plus up. ratio plus any askers plus you got no drip <laughs> he's really going all out absolutely destroyed i mean it's and, tiktok right <laughs> yeah. the tiktok community is just ridiculous oh my god uh, yeah no yeah. hate to the people that no hate to the people that actually you know appreciate the work for what it is like i i do like why did the chicken cross the road that was a fully like made joke song though like it was so it was such an easy basis like why did the chicken like I, mm-hmm. that was made for tommy and its talent show which was a yeah. cool big break for me i really loved being in that video i loved that um, video I haven't, I haven't it seen it. Well. I have, I I'll, I'll, I'll have to go watch well. it. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. And and Tommy and I really liked the part that I played in that video, and I really appreciate it. And the community that came from that is very there, – there's some very cool people there, and they they appreciate mm. the music for what it is. And I, I, I still at least tried to make Why the Chicken Crosses the Road good um, and the best that I could make it for a balance between a joke song – uh, and maybe a little bit serious, you know. I always try to do that, um, especially with the NFT man. Yeah, was like, I I like, actually just so like watched that this morning. It was I, it was very funny. <laughs> it's how it's, it starts off just like oh I bought an NFT, and by the end of the song it's just I'm in debt. I don't have a credit card. My <laughs> wife left me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun one to make. I actually made that closely with my friend Axi, who helped me write that song. Um, he's he's one of my closest friends and comrades ever. Oh, I just I just remembered oh, nice. another another song I really like is Monday Morning. That's such that's a really good song. I really like that one. Thank you. I love Monday Morning because I actually made that with the basis of just wanting to make a song with my friends. Um, like I didn't really expect too much attention to that song. Mm-hmm. I wanted to just be like, oh, oh, this would be really fun to to uh, rent a mansion with my friends and make a song with them. Them, I just I just do want to do it. I just wanted to do it. Like they're all my really close internet friends, um, friends that I made specifically through the internet that we we like to meet in person or like rent an Airbnb together or go to someone's house together and just hang out in that state for a while. Um, and it's always really fun. It's the traditional thing that we like to do every now and then. And um, so we did that for Monday morning. They they all came from my birthday, uh, my twenty second birthday, and. Um, during that time, we went to go film the music video for Monday morning and record the song and write the song. I wrote the song closely with Chi Chi, actually, specifically. Um, and then everybody came over and we recorded it and then made the video. And it was really fun. I I enjoyed that process just for what it was. I, I 
I, I really love the reception on that song because the fact that it got two million views in almost a year, that's that's enough for me on that um, a piece like that. Out, it came out a year ago? Jeez. Almost a year ago. No, wait. Uh, ten months. Almost ten months. Jeez. It, it, it hasn't felt that long. I would have said like four months ago. Jeez. Yeah, I'm about to turn 23. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's a good song and I really like it. <laughs> Yeah, on on the topic of like videos that you do a lot of collaboration with, I think some of the best content that people can really make is the, you know, videos that you do a lot of collaborating with friends. And I think one of my favorite videos that I'm not sure if you uploaded it, but you were in is where you are baking cookies with EA Games and CK9C. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love that video. It's so yeah, funny. Yeah, DA Games uploaded that one. That was a uh really fun to film we actually recorded that when i um hung out with ck9c uh in 2017 and then the video came out like a i don't know like a year a year and a half later or something like that um but it was really that was so fun i was like in my i I was i was enjoying that so much just because that was like one of my first experiences with hanging out with youtubers and what that was like um, wow. People that had more, a little more success than I did, and just like Feel hanging, out with them. <laughs> hanging out with them, was so cool. It was so fun to film that video too. And <laughs> we actually recorded another one uh, uh, a month ago at this point now, and it's not out yet. But we did. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. We made Ooh. burgers this time. We made really crappy burgers. <laughs> it's a, such. It's gonna be such a good video. It's gonna be on my second channel. Do you think it's as good no. as the as, good as the old it. cookie baking one? The first one is probably going to be the best one because of the nostalgia factor, maybe, because yeah. that one was really fun to edit. Um, but I had somebody else edit this one, Charkster. They're really good. But this video is, is, is still going to be pretty funny because the burgers were, uh, they were disgusting. Oh, my. <laughs> Can't wait, Can't wait to see it. Uh, <laughs> so, where do we want to go from here? <laughs> uh so uh that being said uh do you have any like big future projects that you're excited for if you can talk about them yes i don't know when this is going to be up but um i have a um i'm in the talks with a artist that was really big a bunch of years back but was a big inspiration to me when i was growing in my music his name is david archuleta um I'm going to be collaborating with him. He's like, he was from American Idol season seven. He was second place uh, alongside David Cook that year. Um, so that's oh, going to be fun. That's but cool. But then <laughs> something that I think is more relevant to the audience is that I'm going to be collaborating with uh, Abdul Cease. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He's the guy that did the uh, sped up beatboxing. Um, oh. Sure, to I'm going to be collaborating with him. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, way. yes. <laughs> Oh no! No uh, way! Her, her, I, her, I, I, need, I, I need ideas from you. What would you? What would you want to hear? If if what what do you think the title of the song would be? If oh, you no. were to hear a song from CG Five and the the sped up beatboxer guy. Oh, that's a good question. That's he's a tough he's, question. He's turning the questions back on us now. Beating boxes. Yeah. That's such a tough question. Did you say beating boxes? <laughs> I know, that was the worst <laughs> it's a song about. Taking your anger out on boxes. Boom. But Beating uh, boxes. How would that be a metaphor? Like, <laughs> I don't boxes? know. Because it would have to be not specific to boxes. <laughs> yeah, remember, so, gotta keep hey, it open ended. Hey, hey, FNAF, FNAF 4 box. The, the, the <laughs> FNAF 4 box. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the point. <laughs> not the FNAF I was already, 4 box. I was already thinking of calling the song The Bite of 87. <laughs> Please. That, that would be oh pretty funny. My God, that's yeah. a better idea. That is, I'm that just is like, great. how how can I take advantage of this collab? You know, how is this gonna work out for the both of us? We, I need to title this like something about FNAF because I'm into Freddy's for crying out loud. It's still huge. Bite yeah. of eighty five. Yeah. Did yeah. you say bite of eighty five? <laughs> yes, I did. Who said bite yes, of eighty five? Get no. out. <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> How about how about uh, I mean this is probably a bad idea the the beatbox of eighty seven sounds close oh, enough to <laughs> like <laughs> an even worse idea than beating boxes yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. DJ Fair beatbox enough. man yeah, I'm no. the person DJ with the bad beatbox ideas band. not you I have the bad ideas so watch, okay watch, watch, watch yourself <laughs> watch yourself it's okay um, you it's okay to have bad ideas yeah speaking <laughs> of collaborations what's like a potential future dream collaboration 
You, not, not dream. dream. Like, Maybe not dream. dream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe dream. I don't know. Someone um, you would love to work with. Yeah. Probably. Uh, I actually would like to work with Conan Gray. Um, oh, yeah. I'll like Benjamin. Uh, Charlie Puth. Ooh, um, Charlie Puth. Oh, man. I have like a list of people, to be honest. That's a very <laughs> good question. Uh, yeah. Uh, AJR, for sure. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. I really, I really want to reach out to AJ actually I, I, before any other collab. Like, that would be super cool. Um, I think D. Houston was talking about about AJR. Yeah, he about loves AJR. Being this inspired. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't heard a song. Yeah, all those people. I'll, I'll, I'll just check them out. Their music is very um, sample heavy. It's like something that's really unique about their music is that they yeah. uh, sample like weird sounds and. Um, or like telephonic vocals or something like that or or old mu- old music it's it's really cool what they do mm. i understood like half of those words but okay <laughs> <laughs> don't speak music okay. I, I, that's the thing i play guitar is that so, but... you don't have <laughs> yeah i yeah, mean so. like you can be good at something um you don't have to speak music to listen to music. That's a thing right, that yeah, I right. live by is that when uh, people are listening to music, they're not all, you know, music theorists or no, not music theorists, people that are really like into music theory or people that are schooled in the art of music or have learned so much. They're just listening to music because they like how it sounds. Not everybody has to know about music to listen to it. And so, yeah that's my that's the people that i'm trying to please or impress is just people i'm just trying to please people i'm a people pleaser (laughs) i like attention (laughs) that's how you like get a get a good audience if you can make it open and accessible for everybody yeah yeah exactly and every man's music Mm -hmm. yeah so uh (laughs) we've hit another (laughs) stopping point (laughs) what was that I think we're sort of and towards the end of the the questions here. Um, just just, uh, just about out, I'd say, yeah. Uh, um, it's been great having you on the podcast. Thank you for taking time out of yeah. uh, out of your day, out of your schedule to you know just yeah. answer a few questions. It, it it's really it's really it's a really cool opportunity for us, especially like I've listened to your music for years. Same, uh, same. Uh, yeah all of us have listened to you for <laughs> quite a long time and now that we get the opportunity to kind of chat with you is really it's crazy really awesome. in a way thank you it's actually pretty it's always it's always pretty weird to like to to hear that the, there's real people behind these numbers like obviously <laughs> that's true <laughs> but like you to be able to hear from people like oh man i love your music it's like it's always a little bit weird to me but at the same time it's i very much appreciate it yeah but thank you it was so cool to interview De Houston the other day that uh, we found it even crazier that we had managed to, uh, you know, get in contact with you. Yeah, yeah De Houston was is De Houston is literally one of my best friends in the world. He yeah, do we want to lives not that far from me. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he was he, singing your praises during during his interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah we met we him. met in high school. We met in high school, and then um, he we, said you were the weird kid. <laughs> I was definitely the weird kid. Oh my gosh, you have no idea how weird I was. I it was ridiculous. Idea. I tried to stand out. I tried to like wear colored pants. Good and... for you. Good for you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I start. I stood out in a different way. You know, I was like, oh gosh, that oh. kid's kind of weird. <laughs> I, I, I liked the t- I liked attention just as much as I do now, but at the same time, I'm a little bit more humbled because I am an adult. Um, yeah. But I. But we just, you know, me and Dallin, we reconvened after he came back from his religious mission in Argentina, and we just hung out and vibed instantly. That's when we became real friends. That's when. I, I never kept actual school friends. I never kept um, people in school around. Like I'm, I maybe kept to be well acquainted with them, but like I, I'm careful who I call my friends. To be honest, the people that I want to hang out with, the people that I want to talk to, those are my friends. Like mm-hmm. Dalvando, Nandarama, the uh, Houston, Axie, Kathy Chan. DJ Smell, all those people, they're very important to me. Oreo, Chi Chi, you know, all people. I like people 
that are cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the criteria for that's a friend great. of Season Are we cool? Yeah. Yeah, you have to be cool internet people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I don't, I don't fit. I'm, I, I, have to, I'm, I must be going. You don't fit in. Yeah, you don't. You need to, you need to go. Yeah, need I'm, to I'm go. leaving. Bye guys. <laughs> we're we're not, fun. we're not cool enough yet. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. You'll never <laughs> maybe not there. specifically. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, that's. that's You'll never be cool. We've, we've, Encouraging, we've, we've feel encouraging the vibe check. words, bro. Encouraging oh, words. Encouraging vibe. You passed the vibe. You passed the vibe check, but you didn't pass the CG five friend check. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes we, sense. We, we, this makes is sense. the first time we're ever talking. So. Yeah. You've, you've got 3.5 million people wanting to be your friend. This is not surprising. That we don't <laughs> yeah. pass either. Someday it'll be 4 million friends. Yeah. True. They're all, they're all my friends. Such a big number, yeah. <laughs> I hang out with all of them every day. <laughs> we God. like to play video games. I like to play Fortnite. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's trendy. Like... <laughs> uh, when, yeah. Fortnite battle pass. <laughs> <laughs> when Fortnite song? Yeah, do we just love when you burst out into song? It's so amazing. Uh, Thank you. Actually, you know what? I use mixing tools that um that are named Ozone. I hope oh. you know that. Wow, Ozone, oh, you're famous. Ozone. I'm... <laughs> it's it's what? named after me. It's named yeah, after me. They named totally. a, they named yeah. a lay of the atmosphere after him. So that's cool. Oh my yeah. gosh. So what was the what was the company that talked to you about making making these uh making these plugins? Tell me more about that. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> company okay, secret. Answer. Company Classified secret. It's NDA. NDA. Yeah, that, um, Confidential. Yeah, confidentiality, of course. <laughs> True. Yeah. Why don't we why don't we make a Fortnite song in this call right now? No. Do you know what? I actually <laughs> made I actually made a Fortnite song, but I never released it to the public. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. Because I don't like Fortnite. <laughs> but it was a pretty good song. <laughs> <laughs> so that 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 went back to the uh the whole idea that you you prioritize your interest in the media over just getting a song out there because it's popular, right? Yep. I, I the song is pretty good to be honest, but I was just like, uh, this is about Fortnite. I, like I think for me, the <laughs> funny one the... day, That's one funny. one day, just just randomly upload it. Out of April Fool's Day, please drop that yeah. song. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a good idea, actually. Yeah, I'd say the funniest Fortnite song for me, um, when the whole chug jug meme was going around. Uh, Nate once battle posted a video where he did a hard rock cover, but it's but the video which is him like. Just deadpan, just like barely lip syncing. It was the funniest, like, like <laughs> contrast. It was so funny. Take me to your Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I did a cover of that. Oh, yeah, actually. you did too. You did too. <laughs> yeah. I oh, yeah, that. I think I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. So, how do we want to segue into, into the outro? Do we do we spring the, the, the penultimate question on CG5? Or not really a question, but... Actually, yeah. it is a question. Wait, I don't even know the penultimate question. Oh, it's the, thing, last... <laughs> it's the thing we always do when we have a guest on the Dark Room. Oh, podcast. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, as per tradition, uh, you have to give the ending speech. Go. <laughs> that went the psychic. That wasn't a question. <laughs> I'd like to thank my mom for making me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one thus far. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Because it wasn't just, um, uh, the, like, all the others. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, you that's you, you were on top of that. You were on mm -hmm. top of that. Mm -hmm. Everyone Everybody else gets prepared. prepared. Yeah, they get they get like a deer in the headlights. You were on top. You Be knew what prepared. you were prepared. Yeah, you were prepared. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. Wow. Yeah. Did you know we were gonna do that? Do you have inside info? Uh no. I you know I my inside info is your mom. <gasps> oh Inky! Whoa. Oh you got it. your mom. Oh, I'm stunned. All of your moms! <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. The mom's podcast. <laughs> the mom's podcast. <laughs> I think uh, oh we 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 need to we need to segue quickly into the into the end of before before we go even further off the rails. Um, <laughs> Going so, off the rails. Uh, thank you all for watching this episode of the Dark Rooms podcast. Yes. Thank you for C thank you to CG Five for I appreciate uh, it for no. joining us here. Yeah, yeah we was, appreciate it more. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> Um, uh, links fun. are as always in the description. Uh, 
thank you for joining this episode. And if there's nothing else, I'm going to hit stop record button. So, uh, <laughs> that's stop not a thing. Cool.